Hello, my name is Kenny Trussell, and uh, I thought I would record a video showing the progress I've made so far on an autonomous lawnmower. Um, my ultimate goal is to build a, a sprayer for chemicals for hay uh, land, um, but I thought a first step might be to see how well I could do with an autonomous mower, and so that's what I've done. I have a, a zero turn bad boy mower that I chose to use for the project, um, and uh, so I'm going to give you just kind of a quick overview in this video and give more details later. I want to say that um, I'm still a long ways from having it completed and working proper, fully properly, <laughs> fully the way I would like it to work. Uh, and so if you're watching this video any time later than May of 2018, definitely look for a later video that uh, builds on this one and, and has a lot of corrections and so forth because there's still some things that's trial and error and I haven't <clears throat> had it operating very long. I uh, certainly don't claim to be an expert in the uh, autopilot software or any of that kind of thing and so have a, have a long ways to go. But uh, I am pleased with what I've been able to accomplish so far. Thanks so much to the open source community, uh, the Ardu Pilot software, the Ardu Rover version as I'm using here, uh, Mission Planner, uh, and uh, other, other things as well, some open source uh, libraries I've used in some custom programming. Uh, just really standing on the shoulders of giants to be able to do things with, with not a lot of effort because of the efforts of all those folks. So thank you to, to all of you who've contributed to that over the years. Uh, so when I started the project, um, the first thing I thought about was how would I actuate the steering mechanism on the mower. Um, this particular mower has a uh, combination pump gearbox for the hydraulics that run the wheel, so there's not a separate pump with a hose that I could do you know control the flow in or whatever there's a reservoir that goes straight down to the uh, the uh, transmission on each wheel and uh, so that wasn't an option but fortunately the steering uh, sticks that operate uh, that the, the the operator uses go down to a pivot point and then continue below a few a couple of inches and there's a hole there that has a uh, uh, an air shock absorber you might say it's really like a cylinder very much like what you see on a hatchback on a car that uh, is just used to give some resistance and make the mechanism feel the way uh, I guess bad boy felt it should so I was able to take that off uh, just take it loose it's still connected on the other end and uh, put a linear actuator in its place with a two inch stroke a 50 centimeter stroke which is perfect to stroke it the full amount that, that uh, is equivalent to the full movement of the stick uh, up here and uh, so that that gave me my motion now I needed feedback and all that so what I actually did was bought a bought a linear actuator that has a feedback pot built into it and I bought uh, boards um, I'll give you the source later that take a PWM signal from a radio control device or in this case a, 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 a autopilot uh, controller and uh, can take those PWM position signals and make the actuator go to the right position you know by using the feedback and all they work great um, now I've used linear actuators before you know on other projects and know that they don't typically have a very long life uh, if you use them you know move them a lot they're generally rated for something like 20,000 strokes and maybe 20 a 20 percent duty cycle expectation so they're not really made to just continuously work back and forth many many times so I don't expect that will hold up long term, but it's working extremely well uh, for now. I just don't know how long they'll last, so I need to, I've got other plans and thoughts in mind with some suggestions from some coworkers as to what I might uh, do to change that in the future. But right now, that's working and working well. Um, a lot of details about that I'll get into in a later video, but just an overview, that's what I'm using for controlling the, uh, the steering, which of course with a zero turn is also your throttle, it's all in you know, those, uh, those two wheels. So it's a skid steer type steering, which is one of the options in the RG Rover software to choose that you're using skid steer steering, and then the throttle and steering inputs are mixed together in the software and, and used to drive the two uh, wheels the way they need to go for both speed and for turning and so forth. That, that works very well. 
Now, as far as how to go about this from a control system point of view, I originally assumed I would be writing a lot of software myself, and I may still want to get to that some of the more complicated applications like a sprayer, but for now, um, I chose to use a, a PixHawk controller and, a, uh, and the RG Pilot or RG Rover software, and I've been very, very pleased with how well that's worked. There are some features that aren't implemented in it yet that uh, would be helpful, but uh, they're pretty easy to work around, so things have worked very well uh, with, with the autopilot uh, software there. Um, for GPS purposes, I'm, I'm trying a, a kit from Ublox. It's an RTK rover and base system, so it has centimeter level accuracy, supposedly, and, and I'm seeing very good accuracy with it. Um, it, this is an evaluation kit that cost about $500. It's a C94-M8P. It's a great price for an RTK basin rover uh, system. Includes antennas and includes on the board a UHF radio modem that communicate that, so the ro the basin can communicate corrections to the rover without any external connections. Um, and that's what I'm attempting to use. It, it of course, uh, there are some limitations I can talk about later on that are pretty, pretty severe in this, in, in, as far as connecting it to this PixHawk and making everything just work. Uh, I had to work around quite a bit there to get all that to operate, and I will, I'll discuss that later. Um, I read a, a good many people were saying that the uh, GPS antenna that comes with the Ublox C94 M8P kit is not uh, as good as, you know, you get much better results with a better antenna. So I bought a um, Garmin GA38, I think that's the model number, uh, antenna. I've got a lot of extra cable here that I can shorten at some point. It's just BNC connectors on both ends, so not very hard to do that. But right now it's just connected the way it is. Uh, I was actually getting good results with the one that came with the uh, U blocks. However, I don't really I haven't done a comparison. I just changed it because I heard so much that that was beneficial, and uh, I haven't actually changed it on the base yet. I'm still using the U blocks small antenna, but I do have another Garmin unit to put on there as well. Um, let's see, and that's working very well at the moment. Uh, I'll talk in detail again. This is meant to be just an overview. Uh, so, what else can I say in an overview point of view? Um, one thing I might mention is safety features. Um, initially, I just wanted to see it work. So, uh, but you can tell for one thing, my wiring. I haven't. This is certainly not permanent. This looks pretty rough right here, if you because I've added things that I didn't know I was going to have to add. So my enclosure wasn't as big as it needs to be. This, by the way, is a high-priced NEMA 4 enclosure from Walmart in the kitchen section. So, of course, I'm joking, but it is. Uh, it's just a. a food storage container uh, that was about the right size for the components I thought I would put inside the box and um, haven't quite, uh, it hasn't worked out that way but again this is a first shot I'll make a lot of changes over time hopefully but it's all working so um, let's see safety features the first thing I did to make sure that if something went wrong I could stop the device uh, the whole unit because it's a pretty big machine running around. Um, I have a bag of Lowe's play sand right here in the seat acting as the driver that's holding down the switch you know that, that allows it to uh, operate. I had a chain around this hanging over the side so that if I needed to I could grab the chain and snatch that off. Pretty crude but that was my initial safety feature. A little nervous about it so I didn't use it very long at all again just a quick test and then I stopped on the project to do some a little more safety work and what I did was uh, have a relay in series with that switch wired into the wiring uh, and that relay I can actuate from the uh, remote control here and also if I lose communication from the remote control for a period of time I've got it set to 20 seconds right now it will um, shut down the mower as well. Now there are a lot, I spent a day or more getting that to work because of some wrong assumptions and all kinds of things. It's been a huge learning experience. I'm very very much a newbie to the Arduino Pilot software and the PixHawk and all of that. 
So uh, it's been a trial and error experience. I've had a lot of great advice on the RG Pilot uh, forums. I really appreciate all the help. I uh, can't say enough about that um, and how great it's been and all the people who have done so much on that software. But uh, anyway, got all that working, but, and I'll go into detail on another video. And again, uh, some of this will change as time goes on. But I think that's kind of the overview of it. Uh, I have a, I bought a uh, telemetry uh, radio module uh, from Radio Link, I believe. This is a 433 megahertz. I think that's the right frequency. Uh, and this USB module plugs into the PC so that I have communication from Mission Planner to uh, Arju Pilot while it's in operation. That's working very well as well. Um, I went with 433 megahertz because this U-Blocks communication from base to rover is 915 megahertz. So that, I, I stayed away from that frequency by doing the, uh, going with 433 on that. And so that's an, a big uh, upper level overview. I'll, I'll put a couple of videos of the, of the uh, more going across the field. I'm about a quarter of a mile from my house across the pasture here. And uh, I've, you know, I've done a lot of practicing out in the, in the pasture. Uh, and I've also uh, driven it to the house uh, in automatic, letting it, you know, follow waypoints from here to the house and followed it in my pickup truck. And you'll see that on some of the videos. Uh, I don't have a lot of videos uh, ready to, to, for prime time, you might say. But uh, I will be recording more and trying to share and hope this is helpful. I'm certainly open to any suggestions from anyone. And I appreciate your uh, watching the video. Thank you.